and these strong fields are especially good at knocking out electronic equipment. In fact, the laser beam is so powerful, it actually damaged our camera as we recorded these images, when dust particles deflected part of the pulse into the lens. It left a permanent green imprint on the camera's light-gathering CCD imager. Another laser at the lab demonstrates the power of continuous waves instead of pulses. It's an infrared beam, so it's not visible to the human eye, but its effects certainly are. It's very similar to the one that military is developing, only the military is, is about 50,000 times stronger. Right here we have a lens, and so as we go through the lens, the beam is focusing down in this plane here. If I put a target in that plane, you can see that we end up uh, burning it because of, the, because of the heat. And I can then take out a nice smoothly edged piece of cardboard from this cardstock. The laser weapons of future space wars would likely work in the same way. But sci-fi movie fans may be very surprised to find out how real laser weapons will actually work in space. In science fiction, we often see a laser bolt, a bolt of energy, whereas in reality, with a laser, you would see a beam connect and disconnect. I mean, light is the fastest thing we know of. If you were to see someone about to shoot you with a laser beam, you would have to react very quickly when you see their finger beginning to twitch toward the button. Otherwise, you'll get zapped the same time that you see the zapper initiate the zapping. But in a duel in the vacuum of space, even the beams of laser weapons using visible light won't be seen. So the reason that we can, we can see this beam here is that it's scattering off of the dust particles in the air. In space, there are no dust particles, it's a vacuum, so you wouldn't see the beam except for at its target and reflections off of its target. And since sound can't travel through a vacuum, none of those cool sci-fi laser sound effects will be part of a real laser battle in space. But even though laser weapons in space won't look and sound like they do in the movies, they'll still be fast and deadly on the battlefield. So what will a real space dogfight look like? You'll have to see it to believe it. No weapon has fascinated generations of science fiction fans more than high-energy lasers. And it's possible that as soon as the next few decades, lasers will be powerful enough to knock out satellites in near-Earth orbit in the blink of an eye. No weapon is faster than a laser's beam of light traveling at 186,000 miles per second. If we could build a weapon that had the capabilities to punch through armor plating, then you really are on to something. Because if it is just electrical power that you need to, to drive the thing, you have an, what we call an infinite magazine. If you're talking about the big gun on a battleship, you have to have bullets and gunpowder. You can run out of those. If you simply use electrical power to create a laser system, we don't have to worry about somebody bringing us more bullets and where to store those bullets. Laser weapons for use on Earth may begin showing up on battlefields any day. In 2008 and 2009, the United States Air Force conducted limited tests with a weapon known as the Airborne Laser System. It's a high-energy laser fired from the nose of a modified Boeing 747 that identifies and tracks targets so it can blast them with a precise beam of energy. It can put an awful lot of laser energy out. The airplane flies at high altitude and it can shoot up and take out missiles, so it's a counter-missile system. So the day is coming as technology allows us to package lasers in smaller and smaller systems. We can put them on satellites and theoretically take out missiles coming up out of the atmosphere. 
and with their speed of light striking ability, lasers would be a great weapon for spaceship fighters. But futuristic dogfights between spacecraft will have little in common with today's aerial battles or what you've seen in science fiction movies. 200 years in the future, a supply ship and her escort fighters on their way to colonies on Mars are intercepted by space pirates looking for a quick payday. Today, in an atmosphere, planes need to generate lift, which is why they have wings. Because they have wings and because you also want to keep your pilots conscious, you have long banking turns. In space, you don't need to do that. You might have a spacecraft flying along and simply turn around and shoot the guy behind him. Those are the kind of things you can do when you don't require an atmosphere. As the pirates attack the supply convoy, the odd-looking fighters on both sides face off. Probably the best would be a cube covered with thrusters or little rockets and sensors. Doesn't have an atmosphere to worry about, so drag is not an issue. But you want to be able to see 360 degrees, three-dimensionally and be able to fire in all of those directions. It would be a cube. With these strange-looking craft fighting in the vacuum of space, the movements of the fight will also look much different than an aerial battle over Earth. We're going to have much more jerky motion where we're allowed to suddenly just shoot off to the left, suddenly shoot off to the right while keeping our forward motion. We can throw rockets on to randomly break without having to worry about crashing down to a planet like you have to worry about within an atmosphere. But without any atmosphere to slow spacecraft down, could space dogfights reach such high speeds that the human pilots would begin to fall apart? That's what Nicholas B. from Ziegler, Illinois wanted to ask the universe. So he texted, at what speed do human atoms start to break down? Nicholas, your question actually is about a common but very understandable misconception. It turns out that atoms are stable at any speed because in their own frame of reference, they're at rest. However, humans die if they're subject to sustained accelerations greater than about 10 G. So I would say that's the practical limit for accelerations during interstellar travel, 10 G. But how can there be G-forces in the emptiness of space where there's barely any gravity at all? It's all because of Albert Einstein's equivalence principle, a key part of his theory of general relativity. It states that gravity and acceleration are equivalent, like an elevator accelerating up, making a passenger feel like there's additional gravity pushing them into the floor. So if you moved around too quickly in space and you jerked real quick, you would, your brain would move around inside your skull so quickly that you could kill yourself. And so you might want the guided system of your spacecraft to keep you from making those types of maneuvers. Or future strategists may decide to keep pilots out of the fight entirely. So then what would a pilotless battle in space look like? Because of the complexities and dangers of dogfighting in space, pilots may be left out of future space battles altogether. Imagine our pirate ship 200 years in the future trying to take over the supply ship while all of the people remained on the two main spacecraft. Assuming you had a large manned or piloted spacecraft that was engaged in combat operations with another vehicle the same size, you wouldn't launch fighters at it you would throw some tiny space mine, maneuverable vehicle the size of a suitcase that would be stealthy, would float up to the enemy spacecraft, attach itself and blow up. That would be the way you do it. But even though piloted space fighters may not be a dominant weapon in the future, lasers are still likely to play a role if war comes to space. Although they will have some challenges to overcome. 30 years from now, a ground station on Earth is trying to destroy an enemy satellite with a laser. But before it reaches its target, the beam will have to deal with Earth's atmosphere 